Now, in what some are calling an historic move last week, the House of Lords voted in favour of granting advocates legal powers to protect children who've been a victim of trafficking. The new legislation is part of the modern slavery bill introduced in 2004. And joining me to discuss this is Aidan McQuaid, who is the director of Anti-Slavery, one of the oldest human rights organisations in the world. Welcome to the programme, Aidan. Um, very quickly, how significant is this amended bill? It's the initial bill, whenever it was proposed by the government, was very poor indeed. What we've seen through the parliamentary process is a lot of parliamentarians putting important amendments in. The amendments around children's rights and children's advocates are extremely important because they've been dropping through the system and many kids have been going missing um, despite being in care and not having their best uh, interests represented while in care. And there's been a particular concern that they've been re-trafficked. Um, from care into uh, various forms of exploitation. And, so that's and, very important. And the slavery issue, I mean, when you drill down as to what makes slavery, it, it's, very, it's very kind of vast, isn't it? It goes from, you know, being exploited physically, mentally, um, then it goes to being used as, as, as within a workforce or being made to work. Yeah, if you look at the definitions in law and in international law, you're basically talking about all work or service extracted from a person for little or no pay, for which they uh, have not offered themselves voluntarily. And if you look at those sort of uh, practices, you see that, that broad range from the sex industry to exploitation to domestic work. Even within the UK and the British government estimates are somewhere between 10 and 13,000 people in the United Kingdom are in situations of forced labour and slavery. I mean, you mentioned UK figures there. The International Labour Organisation, I know, which you, um, which you um, support as well, says that um, 8.4 million kids are in slavery. Um, but those figures are much, much higher when you look at child labourers and child workers, which go into the sort of hundred of millions of yeah. figures. What you've seen over the past 10 years or so is a significant reduction in children in child labour, but which is not in the best interest of the kid. That's work which is not in the best interest of children. But you have not seen any reductions in the figures in relation to child slavery, which is children handed over to a third party for exploitation. So what that suggests is the worst cases of child labour, child slavery, aren't being adequately addressed across the world. It's still a vast, vast problem. And what kind of roles are these advocates going to be able to play for, the, for these children? I mean, they're going to be able to represent the children in, in the range to all the statutory authorities, all the legal processes they'll be going through. So there will be one person there who will be specifically responsible for the child at all times through that process. And there'll be none of this uh, diffusion of responsibility around the kid so that they get lost in, ver in the cracks in the system. Now, when the modern um, slavery bill was created in 2004, it was done because there was no specific offence targeting someone who was forced into labour. Yeah. And, and this obviously covers not just children but adults. And mm. some campaigners have been quite critical about the bill, saying that actually the one thing they failed to do last week was to look at how visas and people coming over from foreign countries who are being trafficked how that's tied in, because if they are exploited, they can't then leave the employer who is exploiting them because they won't be able to renew their visas. Now, the government said they're going to review this in July. This is the fourth review. Why is it taking so long? This is something which surpasses all understanding. Uh, I mean, at the heart of British policy in relation to slavery, while the government says it wishes to be a world leader against slavery, is something which is a direct equivalent of the Middle East kafala system, which ties workers to employers to such an extent that even in the most exploitative of circumstances, they can't leave employment without risk of deportation. Such huge power which the government willingly hands over to employers. And it's a direct contributor, in my opinion, towards the reason that there is tens of thousands of slaves within the UK. Now, why the government will, refuses to accept this, I don't understand. They introduced another review of this after two uh, other reviews instigated directly by Theresa May and a third review uh, undertaken by the Human Rights Com uh, Committee of the House of Commons, all of which recommended reinstatement of visa rights for domestic workers. But now the government's introduced a fourth one. I think that was in order to try and undermine a vote which went through the House of Lords last week, which demanded the government puts back in place the rights of migrant domestic workers to change employers. So we now wait to see how the government's going to react. I fear that they're going to reject this and we're going to see this ping-ponging back between the House of Lords and House of Commons okay. and never come on to the statute. Very, votes. very briefly, as we're running out of time, sure. I mean, this, the government has been accused of effectively licensing modern
modern day slavery by not reviewing these visas. Yeah. In October 2013, we saw three women, which made the news headlines in the UK, who were held as slaves for 30 years. Mm. Um, a Malaysian woman, 69, an Irish woman, 57, and a UK woman who was 30. People were prosecuted, but this is not uncommon. It's extremely common. One of the things that, that is surprising about that case was that it made the news because it happens to thousands of vulnerable women, particularly women in the UK, uh, in domestic work. There is no right of inspection of workplaces in private homes and there's no right to change employer and this gives license to people who want to exploit up to the level of slavery people who are in domestic work and the government seems quite happy with that. Okay, Aidan McQuaid, Director of Anti-Slavery, thank you very much for coming in. Thanks for having us.